another medium. So is it, there's another artist medium called brusho. Um, now, brusho is kind of a powder format of watercolor paints. And you sprinkle the powder on and then you spray water and then it just outbursts everywhere. So it's almost like a, because I think we've we've covered the, the main basic ones that have been there. Yeah. And then it's so this is when, yeah, so this is when people now start to come up with more creative ideas. And then you've got inks. Uh, then you've got um, uh, uh, other kinds of mediums. So we call maybe this ca category maybe crafty. Is that right? Or is it more, um, what, what category could, could we give this name? Where you're working with various paints, but it's not you're not you're not building something because I suppose craft is um, you know sticking things, gluing things together, things like that. So it would be jewelry making, all that kind of stuff. So what would you say this category would be in? Because like I said, with the brush, are we now breaking the mediums a bit? Um, then you've got the inks, then you've got pen and ink, then you've got um not too sure. I mean with, with a brush show you say you, you put your powder down first and then you spray you it with water or water. you can do the opposite so I, 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 I would, sorry no that's actually quite interesting so it, it's the same basis it's just the process that's a little bit different so, so if we maybe called it maybe just playful mediums so we just put it into a category so anything playful on those mediums, because like you said, you've got, you even have calligraphy as well with pen and ink and you've got writing things and those mediums, you are, are almost again, you're, you're taking, it is wise to know your basics again, because now you are in a way breaking the rules. And if you don't understand your basic uh, technical yeah. parts and processes that can be a very very frustrating process you can either control the process and write something so like with calligraphy write out yeah. a process yeah. or with pen and ink you can either write out a process or with pen and ink you can now cross hatch and you can That's still right. create loads of lines to 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 build that up into uh, either dark light or three-dimensional medium but you kind of now breaking the pro the lines and taking it to a whole new area. You can even just use a normal pen you write with and you can do a, a, an activity with that. Is there anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, inks is, is very, very similar to watercolor, Justine. The only difference is your, your inks will stain um, your, your surface. So, um, and then also airbrush. You put mm. your ink in spray gun. Yeah. So and that's another another kind of, you know, medium. And that, another way. But each one, again, has its process. But would you say that's more of a playful process? Because what I'm realizing is a lot of people gravitate to this medium first or these kind of creative um, uh, uh, mediums because they just want to put things down without an end result. Oh, are you talking which mediums? Uh, well, like I said, like I said, we've mentioned all the creative things from pen and inks to, air, uh, well, well, I don't know, airbrush might be a bit more, isn't it? Because I suppose you could then categorize spray paint, but airbrush, you need a lot more uh, work with that. You need a lot more uh, structure and lessons and stuff with airbrush. Yeah, I, you know, it's it's amazing the way that the, the world is going, which is so exciting. I mean, you know, if you think of airbrush, I think most people think of graffiti. And graffiti art is just so exciting. Yeah. You know, it, they're taking, you know, that art to a totally different level, which is fabulous. Yeah. And, you know, mixed media, you know, introducing, uh, the mixing the media, it's a really, really exciting. And exactly what you said is, as long as you understand, okay, what can and can't be done within each medium, then you're able to break out and break the rules. So what I'm discovering emotionally with this process is basically since we've had the change in the education system and the work industry. So when I say change of education system, I'm saying um, there's an overstimulating part of the left brain of doing things a certain way. Uh, people are feeling controlled. So even when COVID came along, you know, being told to stay at home, uh, medication, uh, you can't break free, you can't make your own choice in certain areas. 
Um, you know, in school, you're either right, wrong, good, bad, you pass or fail. Um, and then in, when you go to work, you know, there's a certain expectation of you and then you work and work and work and work and work and work. And uh, you maybe, you know, take time off and do some exercise afterwards or, you know, you, do, you either go and watch the TV as well. So I've noticed a lot of people who are overstimulating their routine in their brain and they're not really understanding what they love to do gravitate to this area. And they gravitate to this area to break all the rules, to break the confinement, to break the, the feeling of being controlled. Uh, and, and depending on how deep they feel controlled can actually do this for quite some time. Yeah, I, I, I think in a nutshell, uh, I'm also going to put, put it in a nutshell, what you just said. I'm aware that... Um, it's necessary for people to go through the formal classes and the informal classes, which is great. So, so formal will be your left brain, it's either right or wrong. And then informal is when you're working with your gut, working with the instinct, with it, working with your emotion. And when you can meld the two together, it's absolutely incredible. So it's the almost like bringing in, in, in a, a holistic approach to That's life it. isn't it it's it's almost like saying you know if you eat well if you exercise if you sleep if you you know do, do this amount of studying this amount of play time this amount of work it's almost like bringing in a holistic circle and either people shy away from specific mediums because they go oh it must be too difficult or whatever that is so yeah. it's, it's a very interesting emotional uh, uh, uh observation of people but it's nice to see which medium can bring out what and then how they can help you further. Definitely. And I think there's a paradox there as well. Now you're just reminding me as, as you're speaking, is that in order in order to break free, you need discipline first. <laughs> so there's always that, you know. Both sides serve. Yeah. Neither is bad good. It's just they both serve and seeing how they how they serve for you and, and helping you through the process. I think what I'm realizing the gap is, is people are assuming that they don't know themselves or they don't have the answer. And I'm watching how when we're using this creative process and the technical processing, how it helps people identify that within themselves when they think they don't have the tools. Ah, oh, now you've just reminded me of something. Thank you. And that is, I was explaining to the students on Friday, is that we're all quite special in our own right. Is that even before we start a painting or, or whatever, it, it, when I say whatever, some people are facing a, a blank canvas or a blank piece of paper is dealing with the fear of the unknown. Mm. You know, grappling with it, actually, you know, not avoiding it, just going through it. Step so, by step by step. Would you say the creative process helps people become focused in dealing with the fear of the unknown yeah it's like a leap of faith yeah and then yeah okay that's i think that summarizes the the whole part there, isn't it so then when you look now at craft now craft is a very interesting process and actually is in itself quite healing because craft you either i mean i've gone and bought a whole lot of uh, craft boxes for Cairo from the range for for her school holidays and we've got things like where the, the, the stuff that they are coming up with now is just phenomenal, where you've got stickers and then you peel the stick off and you've got to take foil and then you rub the foil on and then you, when you rip the foil off, then it leaves that color of the foil behind. Then you've got painting on glass and you've got painting on stone. Then you've got uh, Play-Doh and then you've got, there's just so much wonderful craft out there to even jewelry making. I think and when I do want to come to Cape Town, Kyra will have to teach me a few tricks. Yeah, but 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 so but so so the, this whole process of the craft process is so important as well. It really, just, I I think that craft positions itself between the two extremes of painting and sculpture. I think it's so. I think it's so good. Yeah, definitely. Fabulous. And emotionally, it also helps you to, well, well, I mean, it has both sides because sometimes, you know, if you've been given Play-Doh, 
you might not know where you want to create things. So you might have a, a, a thing to help make the ice cream, but mostly crafters are presented in a way where you have an end result. So you build, you take something, you build it, and then you have an end result. So there is an actual thing, but the template has been created for you. So yeah, for instance, if you are lovely. painting glass, you've got the, the, the shape of the unicorn's head. So all you gotta do is drip the yeah. paint into that area. Now that's great and well, especially for again for another quick fix. Yes. It's a great way of you know getting out of your headspace, getting out of your mind. Uh, it's great for all those areas there, but at the same time, it also limits you um, in not uh, working through your your stuff. So it's great as almost like a regular gym session on your brain, but then um, you know when you're wanting to take that next level, that next step you start actually seeing students going, I want something more. I feel like I need to be challenged. And they actually say it. Yeah. And that's how you know emotionally they're ready to grow to the next stage. And obviously with children, the same thing. So it's a really yeah. beautiful process to watch uh, as, as people are growing, which projects they are choosing to grow themselves. And then on top of it, you've got people who are taking that craft and breaking the rules in that craft. So they've already discovered in another way to take that to the next level and then people become inspired and follow them or, or do those areas there. So emotionally, it's a really, it's an important gym session, I would say, of, of the day to do some form of craft. Yeah, I mean, in Africa, you've got these amazing artists, Justine, that, are, that have created a functional crafts. Oh, it is just so beautiful to see. Yeah. It really is. So the other meeting we haven't actually mentioned is sculpture. And you you picked that up. So yeah. Yeah. sure. Because you've got clay, you've then got play-doh, you've got plasticine, and then yeah. you've got obviously um, I mean you've got you take it to a whole new you can take it to a whole new level there. We've got sculpture schools and they're doing dynamic metal, um, metal uh, wire, rubber. That, that is rubber. That is just phenomenal on on that side of things. Uh, on on that, and I've discovered in that in there that basically people who um, well, we, we we call it risk play. So it's uh, almost uh, pushing yourself out their comfort zone to be to to take the risk, to be fearful, to do that thing. So you're now working with tools where they can either hurt you. Um, so, so I notice like children who are feeling suppressed in certain areas, but even adults who feel suppressed in certain areas want to now take it to the next level in a risk. So obviously there's a lot of health yeah. and safety around certain things with metal making, with, yes. um, uh, you know, clay, it's going to break, it's going to fall or wire or mesh or all these certain things. Uh, anything you want to add to that part there? Yeah, just thinking, look at the industry, your interior design or um, industry um, where, you know, light fittings are, are, are sculptures, you know, functional sculptures, which is absolutely amazing. And even buildings, you know, uh, you know yes. pl pl plastering buildings, uh, all of that is, is the same process. It's the... Yes. Well, my dear... Yes. So, it, well, that, well, that's great. So, I, I mean, I think we've covered most of everything, but the whole oh, thing is to look at how we've, we've really pushed through in all the areas of how the emotional connection really builds the brain without you having to be in the way, uh, be told what to do, because you start realizing you yourself can can create that that change and, and move it forward. So, thanks yeah. for, for um <laughs> Quite a lot. Of, I didn't realize we we're going to cover so much, which is quite exhilarating. Yeah. Oh, great. Thank you for that.